This is section 6.1 on slope fields in Euler's method. In example 1, we're solving a differential equation. Find all functions y that satisfy dy dx equal this function. So we're going to multiply both sides by dx. So we have dy equals secant squared x plus 2x plus 5 dx. And then we're going to integrate both sides to find y. We're going to find all functions y that satisfy this condition. So the integral of 1 is y, because we're integrating with respect to y, and this is uh, tangent of x plus x squared plus 5x, and we want all the functions whose derivative is secant squared plus 2x plus 5, so we can have a constant on the end, so we need plus c. In example 2 we're solving an initial value problem, which means they're going to give us one point so that we can actually find the constant. So we have dy equals e to the x minus 6x squared plus c dx. We're going to integrate both sides. So we have y equals e to the x minus, uh, that'll be 2x to the third. And then, well, I guess I, I shouldn't have had, oh, I shouldn't have had plus c right away. So here's where we have plus c. We have the point 1, 0, so y is 0 when x is 1, so we have e minus 2 plus c. So c equals 2 minus e, and add the 2 minus the e, so y ends up being e to the x minus 2x to the third, and then plus 2 minus e. In example 4, we're using the fundamental theorem to solve an initial value problem. Find the solution to the differential equation, the derivative equals e to the negative x squared, for which f of 7 equals 3. So we're going to take the integral of f prime of x dx, and that's equal to the integral of e to the negative x squared dx. Well, we know what this side is going to be. This side is just going to be f of x, because we're backing up from derivative to function. But this one... We, we don't know what the antiderivative of this is, so we're going to, to fit the properties they want, we're going to make this 7 to the x of e to the negative x squared. Uh, and then, you know, when we plug 7 in, we're going to integrate from 7 to 7, so this function will be 0, and then if we want a, the value of 3, when we plug in 7, then we'll just add 3. So plugging in 7, creates this, uh, creates a 0 here, and then plus 3, of course, would be 3. Now, if we take the derivative of this, the derivative of the integral would be negative uh, e to the negative x squared. Actually, these should be some different variable, so we'll make it, so that's not x's. We don't want both of these to be x's. These are t's, and then uh, the derivative of 3 would be 0. In example 6, we want to construct a slope field. We want to construct a slope field for the differential equation cosine of x. So what they're saying is the derivative is cosine of x, and we know that the original function is the sine of x plus some sort of constant. So what this, the graph of y should look like is, of course, the sine of c, but it could be there, it could be pushed up 1, uh, it could be pushed up 2, or it could be uh, you know pushed down 1. But all of them would look the same except uh, for the constant. So we don't know what that constant is, so we're going to create a slope field to get an idea of what the function might look like. So the derivative of, or the value of cosine at 0 is 1. And the slope of the tangent line at 0 is 1 for all of these. And so we're going to make a little mark right here anywhere the x would be 0, the slope would be 1. And let's say this was pi over 2, this was pi, 3 pi over 2, and then 2 pi right here. Well, the value of cosine at pi is 0, so anywhere the x-coordinate would be pi over 2, the slope is going to be 0 because the value of the cosine of pi over 2 is 0, which happens to be the derivative of sine. And then pi, the value of uh, the cosine of pi is negative 1, so now we have slopes of negative 1. 
slopes of 0 at 3 pi over 2, and then slopes of 1 at 2 pi again. Now remember, this sine curve could be at any one of these uh, values, depending on what the constant is. So if we were to draw an example uh, of a function that could have a derivative cosine, it would follow these derivatives. So there's the original function. Like that. Or it could be down here at negative 3, and it would follow uh, all that, that pattern right there. I guess it would dip down to here and come up. So this could be possible graphs uh, of the graph that has a derivative that is cosine. In example 8, we're going to match the slope fields with the differential equation. So here's the differential equation, and here is uh, the derivative of some function. Now, we don't know what the original function looks like, but we know some characteristics of its derivative. For example, when x and y match each other, the slope is 0. So when we have 1 minus 1, the slope is 0. 2 minus 2, the slope is 0. So we need to find a graph whose slopes are 0 on the line y equals x. So here's the line y equals x, and we eh, that's getting steeper and steeper. It's not a. If we look at 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, it seems to match what the function is doing that those slopes are 0 along the line y equals x. So this one is b. In number 2, the slopes will be 0 when either x is 0 or y is 0. So we have some potentials here. Here's where the x is 0 and we have zeros. But when the y is 0, those aren't slopes of 0. Those are slopes that are undefined. So it's not a. We already ruled out b. That one's gone. And on this one, it doesn't, it looks like maybe it's doing something like this here. So those are not slopes of 0. This one it looks like we have slopes of 0 when x is 0, and it's kind of flattening out here when y is 0 also. So this one is the letter D. On number 3, let me, let me get rid of some of this. Ooh, I don't want to do that. That erases everything. Uh, I'll just leave it the way it is. Maybe I'll change colors here. In letter, or number 3, we want vertical we want undefined slopes when y is 0, and we want uh, slopes of 0 when x is 0. Let's see where we would have some. Now, when x is 0, oh, look at this. I think this is there right here. Uh, when x is 0, we have slopes of 0, and then when y is 0, we have slopes that are undefined. They're, they're going straight up and down. That's undefined slopes. So number 3 should be letter A. And in number four, of course, we've eliminated A, we've eliminated B, and we've eliminated D. So we know C is the answer. But now, when Y is zero, we have horizontal slopes right here. And when X is zero, we have the vertical slopes right here coming up. So this is letter C.